everyone, and welcome back to the NASL Season 4 Qualifiers, where we, are, we just saw Crank take out Sleep in game number one on Tomb Valley after a very, very tight base race. But uh, after everything's been said and done, Crank came out on top 1-0 to zero and just has to win one more before he's in the round of eight. Absolutely. Round of eight obviously puts him just a step closer to winning that prestigious title of, well, I guess not a prestigious title, but you get a... Uh, 750 bucks out of the $1,000 prize pool, yeah, cool. plus... And a ticket to the NASL Season 4. <laughs> access to <laughs> NASL Season 4. That's pretty important, I That's would what say. everyone's really playing for. <laughs> 750 bucks is really oh, nice, though, yeah. Andrew. Oh, yeah, 750 <laughs> bucks. Let's go ahead and hop into the game on to Daybreak, where Sleep has chosen the next site for battle. Let's go ahead and introduce our players in the bottom left, formerly from Czech 6, also from Korea. It is the Red Zerg, Sleep. And over in the top right, we have from formerly from Team Slayers. Actually, Sleep used to be from Team Slayers as well. But currently teamless and sponsored by Cynical Brit for MLG Raleigh in the Summer Championships. It is the pink Protoss known as Crank. As we were talking about Daybreak, one of the more open maps. It really is nice for Zerg, yeah. in my opinion. That's why Sleep chose it, because you can get your third base. Uh, very similar to ZVT, you can get your third base really start to, you know, drone that up and then materialize it into units as fast as possible, knowing that a lot of different aggressions are much, much weaker. Sleep is probably going to start out very, very standard uh, with the Stefano build, Stefano style build, where we see a third hatchery at around four minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah, um, and then from there, you can uh, pretty much just macro up. And the cool thing is that on Daybreak, uh, it, it, it's, it rewards enough map control, to, even though there's counterattack paths. And uh, you'll really see a lot of Protoss players even go Stargate on this map again, just to try to see if they can control that space, especially with Phoenixes at the third, really can force a weird queen positionings based off that ramp. I know players like MC love doing it, Genius loves doing it as well. Even Inca, who's still in our qualifiers, uh, has shown a lot of problems with Stargate as well on this map. So you know, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to... I, my guess would be Stargate on Daybreak. Do you like Stargate? Hmm. I, I, it's Stargate is... I'm very up and down on Stargate. It's very hot or not. You sh if you ask me next week, my opinion will change on it. But I mm -hmm. love using Phoenixes as disablers uh, in, in mid game. I love using it harassing wise and controlling overlords and even controlling queens that are trying to move out and creep. But I'm, I'm very like, oh, like I, I hate losing phoenixes because if you lose them to all one fungal, you just, that's, that's it. You lose so much from it. Yeah, I think I'm the same way with you. I don't know what to think of them because as you were talking about, they have so much potential. We've seen MC do beautiful, beautiful artwork with, with phoenixes. I mean, he's able to control them to a point where it's like, wow, you just wrecked the counter to you, which are normally infestors or quote-unquote infestors. But that is something so spectacular, in my opinion. The, the fact that there's such a high skill cap for Stargate play and the fact that one person can flounder with them completely and the other person can just reap the rewards and the benefits. Absolutely, and I think uh, now that we have that in consideration, we'll see how Crank chooses to play out. Keep in mind a couple things like his gas timings, especially since Crank's been doing things very unconventionally. One gas, fast twilight for a quick plus two, but like nothing else, mm -hmm. and just pure gateways. In fact, he was going mass zealot at one point, and then he transitioned into stalker sentry. So it's, I think from that, Sleep says, well, this is not very normal PvZ, so even if he chooses to do it, like for example, look at that, he's, he's triple gassing at this point. Interesting. Wow. Triple gas. There is actually a lot of things you can do with this. Blink stalkers comes to my mind right now. Hmm. But the triple gas, it's important to note that it's late. Look, the Cybernetic score actually finished, and he can't actually utilize anything from it. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get, no doubt, the, the warp gate really quick, and then after that, you can choose to go for a quick stalker. And so I'm very, very curious to see how he's going to move from here. But he does have this first zealot out into the field. And Sleep's making six Zerglings at this point, so I guess he feels a little bit insecure at, this, at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally you do make Zerglings in case you're afraid of some sort of huge all-in. It's actually, actually not all-in, but uh, just for any pressure, I should say. Mm. Four gate um, is pretty common. Four yeah. gate is when you get, obviously, four gateways really fast and just put plus one pressure on. Oh. Normally how you're able to relieve that, though, is just scouting and look at this forward forge 
Yeah. We and, have uh, no spotters. Look at this. Also, the probe is neatly tucked away right behind that test tube. Ooh, and the Zerglings are just going to barely miss it. So Sleep wow. is not spotted whatsoever. And we have a Twilight Council already on the way. Now, the way Crank's been gearing his gas, it can line up straight into Dark Templars. Correct. And that's going to allow Crank to have some really good map control. We've seen DTs make a comeback. But, oh, the Zergling discovers the probe, Andre. That is very, very key. Wow. Dark Templar is obviously very, very powerful if you're able to catch your opponent off guard. But if you're not, it can actually kill you straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if your opponent knows you're going Dark Templars, huh. it's really easy to actually counter that. Obviously, put Spore Crawlers and Spine Crawlers everywhere. Get some uh, additional Overseers into your army composition, and you're able to counter that very, very efficiently. Obviously, get a big economic advantage from that as well. So, right now, Crank... He is going for Dark Templars, but the fact of the matter is he doesn't have the best map control with these Zerglings out on the map. Yes, he's able to put pylons down, but he's doing it in range of these Overlords. And not only that, he's passing them all over the place. So if there is good Zergling control, oh, every great. single one of these pylons should be taken out. Great job, I see. Look, you see his Overlord spots the other two pylons as well. It just He's able to see almost everything, so sleep. Uh, oh, well, he does get one pylon warp in as well. The Zealots are now uh, here at right by the gas wall. And you can see the Zerglings are targeting another pylon, but as long as Crank can really anchor himself here, as he just needs one pylon, really. The Dark Shrine is about 75% done. Crank does have a few Zealots out, and he could protect that for a long time, especially with plus one weapons done. Definitely. Definitely. And four more Zealots are going to pop out right here. Now, this is the weirdest timing ever. This really can't be a four-gate timing because this would have hit... Yeah you know, ages ago. Oh, very nicely done. The Zealots are just minorly out of place, and the pylon goes down because of it. Beautiful play. Now the Roaches can encounter it against these, Zerg, uh, these Zealots, and Crank is uh, now in pretty much in an yep. almost unwinnable situation. I mean, Spore Crawlers are up everywhere. There's really no point in getting Dark Templars. That's why he's switching over to Robotech. Continuing his <laughs> plus two, trying to play this macro from here on out but that is really difficult. I mean, the silver lining is that Crank has a pretty healthy probe count. I mean, Sleep had 40 drones at that point, and now he just put another wave up to the mid-50s as well. And, I mean, Crank does have the availability of Dark Templar. He hasn't even lost He hasn't even lost that much gas. He just pretty much traded minerals at yeah. this point. Although, granted, it was a lot of minerals yeah. between the pylons and the zealots. But from here, Sleep gains a lot of flexibility and comfort knowing that he's prepared for almost everything. Right. He even had Spore Crawlers up at his main in, or his third in his natural. I mean, he knows that there's no third base. And for there to not be a, a third base for this long, there's just one clear progression for sleep. That's what's so awesome. He can play this very efficiently, and it's to make a lot of drones because as he knows he just cleaned up a ton of zealots. It was probably Dark Templars with how everything was suited out. But from, from here, you just drone up and get a ton of units and pressure the third base of Crank. Yes, there's no third base right now, but it's going to be coming out soon. Once that third base actually gets planted, you just start attacking the natural, you start attacking the third base, and really just try to stretch the Protoss thin, knowing you have an expansion up on him or her. You see that Crank is now motioning for a third base, starting that really quick plus three. Of course, uh, just, you know, Protosses love having that ability to really shred Zergs for not really getting double Evo upgrades unless they're going for fast Zerglings anymore. You see Sleep is now trying to cut off that third base, but ooh, Crank's oh. trying to go for a flank, but he's getting separated at the same time. Blink isn't done, his Stalkers might get trapped at this point, and they do end up losing uh, several units. And that is really good news for Sleep. Oh, in fact, the other Stalkers are also caught the wrong way. This is very disorganized army movement by Crank. Yeah, Crank just about to finish Blink right now, so he might be able to salvage some of the Stalkers. No, he doesn't get in time. Stalkers and Sentries are the only types of units that are out on the field right now. He really needs the power of those Immortals. Relying too much on Blink is never a good sign because actually Zerglings and Roaches can hold you off forever in these positions. I, I don't want to always say that's the case. Um, sleep at this position is just sticking to three base though. Really interesting. You want to actually get your fourth base down just in case, there, as I say it, he gets it down. But just stop your opponent from getting the third base and you will just maintain the advantage the whole time. And you can see that, uh, I mean, Sleep's done a great job denying Crank the ability to do anything. In fact, Crank's been keeping DT's uh, I mean, the fact that he's been having DT tech but haven't used it at whatsoever, 
Um, I'm very, I'm very interested to see if Crank ends up pulling out any kind of Archon use or whatnot. But I guess at this point, with so many Roaches out into the field with Sleep, and the fact that Sleep Scout's no th third base, I mean, I guess he's pretty much aware of what Crank can do. I mean, at this point, Crank's just got to go for a massive timing and really hope it works. Yeah, and this is perfect. Sleep is just giving himself more time, which is kind of weird because it, it should be kind of the other mm. way around, but. Uh, because because of this counterattack, he's actually able to buy maybe a couple minutes. And from here, look at the upgrades that are going down. Plus one, one. Burrow is on the way. That's really going to penalize for having no observers out in the field. But if you get something like Infestors, that would also be fantastic. Infestors, obviously, really good at dealing with these army compositions. You just make sure you fungal down those sentries, and then empowers all the waves directly after that, whether it be Zerglings or Roaches. 47 roaches will be on the field. Nope, 48 will be on the <laughs> field by the time uh, Sleep's done producing everything. It's going to be absolutely absurd uh, efficiency if Crank is able to get everything, especially without an observer with roaches with Burrow. Pretty crazy things can happen if you micro them very well, especially with flank that Sleep is setting up. He's got a patch of his roaches at the third, a patch at his natural, ready going for a two-prong attack. He's wrapping around, but at the same time, uh, Crank is in a pretty decent position if he wants to force field up the northern parts. Yeah. This is going to come down to who can get a better engagement. If Sleep can target down things like the sentries, get a good position on the immortals, he will take that fight easily. But for now, he's buying more time with another run by. Exactly. This run by was able to get through those pylons, actually kill one of the gateways. Now, start targeting down those probes and that really makes a, a, mm. a time ticker i mean crank needs to actually put this pressure on immediately and sleep all he wants to do is just say no i'm good don't worry you don't 59 have to roaches around the field trapping with several of them they're forcing them to engage this is what crank needs to do for now no infestors are out onto the field just yet in fact a flank from sleep and crank's gonna immediately split his forces while still force you in the front using that spore coil as a way to also barrier off against the roaches this is good oh efficiency thus far but the flank is also coming in now the stalks from behind need to also attack these immortals are doing phenomenal damage 15 kills for both of them thus far front end I think if Crank actually does this right, he might actually be able to win this. He's actually tucked away in this corner. He's warping in additional stalkers. He could have actually gone for Zealots. That would be much, much better in this position. But now Funko Growths go down. Is it going to be enough? The final Immortal looks to be getting targeted down. The Roaches are just thinning out this count. No more blink action left. The War Prism actually dies, and Crank... I think Sleep is going to be mm. able to hold. Yeah, I mean, Crank, Crank has such an opportunity there as well. Like, if you save the Immortals with the Warp Prism, I know you want to warp in as well, but you just turn it back into uh, to, uh, to normal mode where you can able to transport units, pick up the Immortals, and do some really fancy micro. That's pretty much what you do. Plan on the higher ground if, for all you want to do, especially with Crank forcing him up against the wall. A lot of opportunity, but... I mean, Crank in the end killed 100 supply worth of Roaches and Zerglings. The big story though is that Sleep now has Infestor Tech out very comfortably and starting plus two, plus two. And that is just going to close the gap because those Stalkers had plus three with the Immortals hitting at 65 damage on the Roaches. Yeah. I do want to mention real quick that the units lost tab is showing very, very equal resources lost. It's actually like 300 minerals or 300 resources apart. And that makes it so bad for Protoss. Obviously, only being on two base to the Zerg's three base, it really means Sleep is going to have a lot more to work with. And if we look at the army tab, it's still showing 2300, 475, so a, a very small investment before Zerg into the army, but that's going to change in a little bit. 44 Zerglings on the way, 11 Roaches, mm. and these Infestors, they're going to count so much. Well, uh, big bling forward from Crank has to be very cautious because, again, Creep is very, very, very far up the map, and it's going to make it very difficult for Crank to be able to get any sort of good blink positioning. Has a few sentries sprinkled into his army to control space, but, I mean, it's just really tough because now there's Infestors out. There's a spine crawler as well to really buy time and give good vision in case, uh, I mean... Crank's able to do anything from this point. And with a huge fungal forcing oh. all the stalkers to stay in place, the Roaches pretty much can go to town on the rest of the armies. GG gets called out. And Sleep evens the series one to one and uh, puts, puts Crank up against the wall. Yeah, great Zergen control in that beginning phase, taking out all the pylons, making sure you can warp in TTs, even having the insight to make spore mm -hmm. crawlers and be prepared for that. But the natural progression that Sleep had was perfect. He went took his economy, mm -hmm. got units, pressured the third, made sure his opponent really couldn't push out off of two bases, and then bought himself time 
to uh, ultimately yeah. deal with that push. Love the time buying from Sleep. Very key, and yeah. especially if you you know that fact that you're denying the third base over and over. Sleep was able to get really good scouting information and buy time, and, and good intuition as well, like sensing DTs, seeing, wow, I only saw one stalker, very anxious to place down a pull up pylons. The fact that he showed only zealots, has to do something with his gas, plays three Correct. spores. Sleep was firing on all cannons for game number two. And we're as we move forward, we're going to go into game number three with Sleep vs. Crank. It's gone down to this last game, a best of one, you could say, to see who moves on into the round of eight. You're watching the North American Star League Season 4 qualifiers. We'll be back after this break.